Hi, Mariano Gomez, the Dynamics GP Blogster here. In today's episode, I want to show you how to use Microsoft Flow to transfer a file from a manual trigger uh, to an Azure Blob Store. This is going to be fun. Stay tuned and follow as you can. Let's see how it's done. So here I have my Azure portal. And what I'm going to start by doing is creating a new resource. That resource is going to be a storage resource and we're going to set up a storage account for this demo. So I'm just going to click here on storage account and I'm going to continue to basically uh, fill in all the different fields, follow the prompts until I get it done. So for here, we're going to set up a, or, or select one, an existing resource group. You can create your own from scratch if you want. Uh, the only one thing is you need to make sure it's unique. Um, Azure is going to validate that for you, so nothing to worry about here. Uh, I'm just going to call this Mariano, Stor Mariano Storage Account. Okay, like that. And I'm going to position it in um, US East, as that's where I'm currently located. Nothing specific about that. So um, there are some other settings that you can choose, like the kind of account that you want to set up for the replication. I'm just going to go ahead and accept the defaults as is. Then I'm going to set up the networking settings. So I'm going to make this basically a public endpoint. You can choose to make it um, a public endpoint for selective uh, networks, or you can basically make it a private endpoint. That is entirely up to you. So I'm just going to go ahead and then click next. And um, as far as security goes, you can then choose to um, require a secure transfer of the data. Uh, you can set up some data pro protection options and some data lake storage options. That's entirely up to you. I'm just, again, going to go ahead and accept the defaults. Then you can tag your storage account if you want. I'm just going to hit uh, create to continue and create that storage account. Okay, so now that the validation has been passed for all the settings that I've chosen, I'm just going to hit create here. And that should go through and set up the initial deployment and um, basically create that storage account for me. It's a fairly quick process, so I'm just going to hang by until that is done. And once it's done, uh, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to set up the, um, uh, you know, the, the blob in order to uh, store the data that we want to store. Okay, basically the file that we're going to transfer out from Flow. So here we go. This is currently uh, processing. So as you can see here, we're done. The deployment is complete. We can go now to the resource. The one thing that you're going to need to keep in mind here is the access key. That's going to be required for flow. So um, we're going to work about, uh, worry about that later on. OK, so the next thing now is we have uh, blobs. Currently, we don't have any container set up. So we'll probably want to set up a container to get started. So again, I'm just going to make this quick and call it Mariano container. And uh, I'm just going to make this a um, a private container at this point. So I'm going to hit OK here. And now this has actually created my container inside my storage account. So perfect. We're good to go. A container is equated to very similar to a folder uh, where you're going to store um, the files. Good. Now that we have that in place, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over here to flow and I'm going to create a new flow. And um, I'm going to actually use um, an automated flow. I'm going to set or skip this for now. So we're not going to set any names to it until we're done. And uh, what I want to do here is I want to start with a manual trigger. So I'm just going to type manual here. And as you can see, basically, um, we have the option to manually trigger a flow. So that basically is going to create a flow button for um, those of you who are familiar with flow buttons. Um, if you're not familiar with flow buttons, I'm going to actually put a couple of links in this video where you can go and get more information. As such, I'm going to add an input. 
and that particular input is going to be a file input now we can choose to change the prompt if we want to but because this is a quick demo i don't plan to do that right now so we can just go ahead and leave that as is now one of the challenges that we have is to get the actual um the actual body or the name of the file uh, that is uh, associated to this particular trigger uh, that's not a default setting that we can just uh, pull from our dynamic content so we need to trick our way through this one so we're gonna add a new step and what i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna add a variable okay we're gonna initialize the variable and this variable is going to be called file name so we're just going to retrieve the file name from the previous action and that of course is going to be a string okay so if we look at our dynamic content we can see here that we have access to the file content but a quick peek to this code for the trigger will show us that in reality what we need is the name property for that file okay so basically here we'll see that as part of the properties we will need to extract the name itself and that that particular one is of type string we also have the content bytes which is a long string that contains the actual file content in base 64 format so what I want to do here then is I want to peek at this code and I can see now that this um, file content points to the trigger body file content bytes. So if we go back here again and peek here, peek here quickly, we will see that the one that we need is actually the name. So this is easily resolved with an expression. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just click on this field, go to expressions, and as you can see here, I got to start with a trigger body function. So I'm just going to type trigger body. Okay. And if I follow kind of the uh, outline of the expression, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to add a uh, question mark. And I'm going to add the file, of course, because that's at the, the level of the JSON payload that we need to be. But instead of the content bytes, what I need is I need the name. So what I'm going to do here then is I'm going to actually go ahead and um, add a question mark and we're going to actually retrieve the name. Okay. So that should basically be the case for this. You can then remove the file content and just go ahead and test as, um, as needed. So let's click test here and perform the trigger manually and hit start. And now we can see that if I choose a particular file, in this case, my net, my image, I can then run this flow and I can see the flow run page. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to look at this last thing. And um, what I'm looking here for now, you can see the value is actually set to the name of the file that I retrieve. That's important because I'm going to need that for the uh, for the storage account that I'm going to um, submit to um, to Azure. Okay, so now that we have the file name, let's see how we actually store the file in uh, the Azure storage account that we just created under the container that we just added so for that i'm going to add a new step and i'm just going to look for azure blob here and as you can see one of the options that i have is to create a blob now this is going to actually ask me for the connection information and all the data that we need to set up that particular uh, connection so i'm just going to call this for now Azure uh, blob storage and the storage account name if we go back to this list you'll see that my storage account is called Mariano storage account as we actually set it up so I'm just gonna add that here 
and then I'm gonna be prompt for my access key. So I'm gonna go back here and look for access keys and I'm gonna copy this particular one and I'm gonna paste it over here in my connection. Perfect. So I'm gonna hit create here and that should basically wire up my connection. Now I'm being asked for the folder path. Remember that's the actual container that we um, set up here. So if we look at this, my container is called Mariano container. So if I click here, I should be able to pick it. So that's perfect. And now for the blob name, we're going to use the same file name pulled from the variable that we um, created. And uh, for content, we're going to use the actual file content. So those three elements should allow us to basically look at um, or, or get that file transferred from a manually triggered flow over into our Azure blob. All right, so what I want to do then is I want to test this particular um, flow. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on test. Okay, we will run the trigger ourselves um, manually. So I'm going to save and test. And what I want to do here now is this is going to authenticate to my Azure blob. So that's good. And we notice that that succeeded, meaning that I entered all the information correctly. Now I'm selecting the file that I want to transfer. I'm going to hit open here and I'm just going to tell it to run this flow. So we can go to the flow run page and we can choose to look at our current flow. And we notice that that was pretty quick. It's, it, it succeeded without any issues. Um, if I head over to my storage account and I look at my container, I can see that I have the file here. This basically concludes my demonstration on how to use a um, Microsoft Flow workflow to take a file from a manually triggered uh, event and move it over to um, Azure Storage Blob. You can do this for your pictures. You can do this for uh, files that you download on your mobile device or any type of file that you have a need to actually move over to a secure location. That is not your typical OneDrive or SharePoint. So I hope you find this video interesting. Please, please, please comment below and uh, subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.